in, what do you prefer? Because now you're doing Tybalt and Romeo and Juliet. Would you, are you glad to be doing both artistic director and dancing? Or would you just want to be a dancer or just the director? I think I have the best of both worlds. Um, being the artistic director, I get to see behind the scenes. I make some serious decisions. and But then I get onto the dance floor and experience what the dancers are going through. So whether that works in my favor or not is something I would question because you can't reprimand them and, and, and um, be not, not hard, but you, you can't be their friend. And then when you get onto stage and you're a character and you've got to then go as Tybalt, like hug one of the harlots and interact with them, you've got to have their support as well. So it's trying to find that now I'm the dancer, so you've got to treat me as the dancer, and then now I'm your boss as the artistic director, so I'm going to shout at you because what you're doing is not wrong not right or um, I'm not happy with the standard of your work or whatever the, the case may be so it's, it's sometimes it's difficult for them as well to, well are you my friend now as the dancer or are you, are you my boss you know and, and sometimes I pick it up when I'm in a, in a performance and I'm on stage like the younger ones especially won't come and talk to me as my character um, even though they are meant to talk to Tybalt but they see me as oh there's, there's my boss uh, oh no I'm too scared to go and talk to him so then they sort of skirt around me and I, I, I was trying to find that kind of thing but for me personally I think I'm at, a, I'm at a happy place. I'm, I don't have any regrets about my career. I did amazing things. So to answer your question, I'm, I'm very happy the way things are. Um, and, and obviously the dancing side will get less and less. And the more men and, and the, the more mature that our dancers become and fulfill those roles, then I won't have to step in. And male dancers are the standard. You know, we can recruit young 18-year-olds, but there's a lot to be said about experience. Um, and someone that can partner and who has the maturity to carry off, carry off a particular role. You know, I can't, I can't have a company of 18-year-olds who are inexperienced and have never been in love, really. How do, how do you get someone to portray the character of Romeo if they've never done a full-on pas de deux and then have never actually had the experience of having their heart broken or committing to a relationship where they're actually prepared to kill themselves? So there's that whole dynamic that is very relevant on stage. Have you ever wanted to kill yourself over another thing? Well, you know, there's, there's times where you, like, say, Khan and I have had a fight yeah. and you get so, so angry, but um, it's it's not to that extent, um, you know, but that's what Romeo does. In fact, we've got some great talent coming through. I've got three international guests that are coming to do Romeo. Um, I've got Juan Lida, who actually came and did Nutcracker with us at, um, at the State Theatre last year, end of 19, uh, 2010. And then I've got um, Michael Braun, who's an Australian dancer, who we've never worked with before, so, and he's here and, and doing really well. Um, he dances with Shannon Glover, and, and they look beautiful together. And then our, my friend, Kim Rimberg, who was a founder member and board member of South African Valley Theatre, um, who actually resides in New Zealand, is coming out to do both Tybalt and Romeo, and he'll do Romeo with Winnie Silvers. So um, I'm excited to see that. Uh, um, I haven't seen him in years, so, and we chat a lot, but I mean, the internet is an amazing, amazing tool to stay in contact with people, and we've, we've been in contact with one another, but I haven't actually physically seen him, so I'm excited to, to see him again and just catch up. about the internet, do you find the internet and social media is helping your profile? Absolutely. I think it's the way of the future, you know, um, I think we've all got to stay on top of our game and, and access all those different um, um, media sources where we can get our, our word out there because our, our publicity advertising budget is so so small I mean we take one billboard and and one flat in a newspaper and that's it that's our budget gone you know and I keep getting inundated with people saying well we didn't see anything in Pretoria papers we didn't see anything here and we live out this way but we didn't see anything and I've just got to come back to them and say if I had the budget I would be putting it on TV I'd be putting it all over so we've got to make use of these mediums where we've, we've just got to do whatever we can to make sure that people support us you know because I think there's this perception about local is not always the greatest and you've got to wait for these overseas companies and then people rush to come and see you know as soon as it says anything to do with Russia. international yeah. well, Russia well Russia you know that's that's an example um, but do you but, find that the audience is discerning here? Yeah, I've got to be careful because I think our audiences that, uh, that come and are great supporters and we've got a fantastic base that do support us are highly informed and know exactly what's going on and they know when the performance is good or when it's bad. But then we've got those that hardly ever come to the ballet and maybe do a once in a year thing because they hear, oh, it's the, the Russian great stars or it's from wherever and they think, well, it's got to be good, which I'm not saying that they're bad, but... We, we can hold our head up high and right up there. And I just wish our 
local South Africans would support their local talent because we're losing them. Because our talent's going overseas very quickly because they've been paid decent salaries, they're being respected um, and admired for what they can do as artists and as athletes, actually, because that's what they are at the end of the day. The Black Swans. Do you find that they've created a bit more interest in ballet from people who might not have been so Absolutely. Interested? Absolutely. Um, you know, there were so many different views about what the actual movie was like and there were our diehards who hated it and then there was others that absolutely loved it. I what, I what I loved about it was the fact that people were talking about ballet. It became the talk of the town and everyone, whether you liked it or not, you were still talking about it. And I think it was because there was this whole, um, uh, how do you say, dark side that sometimes is not associated with ballet. You think ballet, you think pink tutus frilly, and, and I think this has changed the perception of what ballet is. But, and let me tell you, it's very real what, what um, Natalie Portman was going through. I can cast people in the company in those roles. They are, you know, you get so caught up in a role that it actually becomes part of who you are as a person. If, if you're that way inclined, I'm, I'm not saying that everyone does it, but you know, you, you, it becomes you. you know, I, I see them, I see the, the different like Juliets now. Almost. Totally, absolutely. And there, there is the vibe for that role, there is the, the, the difficulty and it's that disappointment, it's the elation of being chosen to do a certain role and whether the artistic director likes you or not. I mean, when he went around and tapped him on the shoulder and said, well, you're actually, if I tapped you, you're out. Um, if I didn't tap you, you've got to come to the rehearsal. I mean, it's, it's pretty much like that because when you're casting, you say, who's best to, to, to do this for, the, for this season? You know, so there's, it's a hard life, you know, and you've got to make that sacrifice of, is your body at its um, optimum health? Do I look good? Am I overweight? Am I not? And, and the demands on the, da on the dancer today is that much greater. You know, gone are the days where, okay, what's well, nice for you to do with your leg up here, but, you know, at 90 degrees. 180 is the norm now, so people are, are, are not going to just sit back and say, okay, well, that's great. And artistry is the big thing, you know, because we can watch all these digitally enhanced movies and everything, but there's something about that energy that comes off that dancer that portrays that artistic element, and that's what I love. By the time we get onto stage, don't give me steps. Steps anyone can do. I want to see you interpreting that character and tell me the story. Move me. Fill me with that emotion of what you're going to go through, and it's something that I, I'm very passionate about. You can't teach people that you either have or you don't, um, so, but you've got to try and get the best out of them and pull it out of them. And I, I, I try and make them do it from early on in the rehearsals because it's that much more physically demanding because when you get up on stage and that adrenaline's pumping and you, you go that extra mile and you give that extra bit of energy acting, you are physically drained, both mentally and physically, you know, because you get caught up in that whole thing. And I don't think audiences understand it or appreciate it. They come and they think, oh, well, that was nice. They either like you or you don't like you, but they don't really, I don't think, understand the intensity of, of what goes in behind that drop. Yeah. If you don't convince yourself, the audience picks it up. They know. It's like, well, it was okay. It wasn't great. And that's, I think that separates great performance from, from just average artists. You know? So what, uh, to you, stands out about this production, Romeo and Juliet? The enormity of it is huge. From, from the sets are big, the, the, the amount of people that are required to fulfill it. I was just, I was, uh, as I was driving into work today, I just thought, oh my goodness, if I'd known, and I knew. I mean, if you think there's a Romeo, there's a Tybalt, there's a Mercutio, there's a Benvolio, um, there's a um, Lord Capulet, Lord Montague, there's a Duke of Verona. I mean, that's like eight or nine men before we've even started with any of the core boys dancing. So it's, it's, that's just the men's side of it. So the, the production side is huge. I think Romeo and Juliet, as opposed to say, let's say Swan Lake. Yes, they're both love stories, but Romeo and Juliet you can relate to on a more, because it's about a young girl and, and guy that are in love and the decisions they make to make sure that their love can carry on. Um, Swan Lake, it's hard for some people to relate to because she's actually a swan and she's got to wait for that spell to be broken. And she, you know, so there's like, oh, well, why would I be a swan? I can't relate to being a swan. So yes, Swan Lake is beautiful in its own right, but I think, I think Romeo and Juliet can be um, relevant to everyone out there, men and women. I mean, there's amazing fight scenes um, with, with swords, and I think the guys that are going to come and watch it will, will like it. I think I've, I've really tried to make a concerted effort to make them impactful and like, wow, that they're really fighting. Um, and, it's, and I think that's going to come across nicely. And then there's the, the beauty, the natural, classical beauty of some amazing predators and we've got great cars, so the Juliets and the Romans are looking absolutely magnificent. I think it's going to be a stunning yes, production. I'm excited for people to see it, you know, and I don't want people to think, oh, well, you know, it's, uh, we saw that 
four years ago, it's no, it's it's different. And I think every performance is different. You know, you're seeing a different interpretation from different characters, and we've got some great artists up there. And, but the Joby Theatre has implemented a new, their own personal ticketing system, um, and so any performances that happen at the Joburg Theatre have to go through the. Um, ticketing system at the Joburg Theatre, or you can contact the South African Ballet Theatre um, and book through Eka, um, and the telephone number for that is obviously a Joburg number, and it's 877-6898, and Eka will be able to do your booking for you as well. But the Joburg Theatre has got a fantastic new website where you can go on and actually get a 3, 3D dimension of where your seat is in the theatre in relation to what you're looking at on, on the stage. So you can see, oh, do I like the angle? Okay, let me move four seats down. It's a better angle. I mean, you can click on it, and it's very, very simple, and it's worth going on to. Great, thanks Ian. Thank you.